My name is Julio Aguirre Giso, and I'm by training a biologist. And I've worked in cancer biology uh, all my life since I was an undergrad. The area of research that we explore is called cancer dormancy. And it's an area of biology in, in cancer biology that tries to understand why after a patient that has been treated successfully for their initial cancer lesion can develop recurrences sometimes decades after that primary lesion was removed. What this told us is that the cancer in many patients pauses and takes years or decades to eventually reappear. And that time gives us an opportunity to intervene, intercept the residual cancer cell in the patient and prevent it from recurring. If we do that, we would save many lives. And that's a new area that in the last 20 years we've pushed forward and now many other centers and labs are working on it to try to understand this biology and bring it to the clinic. So in this space of cancer dormancy where the patient is supposedly in remission and the cells are not active, these cancer cells are sleeping in the body, this offers us two opportunities for intervention or, or as it's called now, interception. One is to try to keep those cells sleeping or dormant and just keep them at that state. They don't bother anyone. And the other opportunity is that once you put the cells to sleep, if you know how they're surviving during that sleeping time, you could try to block the survival signals and kill them in their sleep. So cancer cells can disseminate very early before the primary tumor develops. This is imaging that performed here in the Grass Slipper Biophotonic Center at Einstein, where we showed that in this animal had precursors of a tumor and already the cancer cells were moving into the normal tissue and interacting with the bloodstream. And then we were able to do more imaging and now the previous image is rotated and now you can see on the side these cancer cells moving and actually entering the bloodstream. That's the cell body trying, this is repeated now, trying to enter the bloodstream. So then because this movie only captured this part of the event, we developed additional imaging where we were able to see the cell approaching the blood vessel, negotiating its way into the blood vessel and then entering the blood vessel and spreading. Now this is all happening in the primary site. And what we discovered is that these cells that you're seeing here are the most dormant cells that we've ever found. These cells move very actively, they're aggressive in their movement, but when they arrive to the lung, they sit in a dormant stage. That's what you can see here. The same cells that I showed you now detected in a different way. This red color marks the gene that drives the cancer in this model. And this is a solitary cell in the lung sitting dormant. And around these cells, you cannot see it because it's not marked specifically, there are macrophages that are telling this cell to remain dormant. But if we eliminate those macrophages, now this cell is able to start proliferating, form these clusters, and then these clusters grow into this massive metastasis that has thousands of cells, and they can keep growing. And the yellow signal that you see there is a protein that tells us that those cancer cells are actually dividing actively. And these are the lethal metastases that eventually kill the mouse or can kill a patient. So our goal is to target this part of the disease. So none of this ever happens. The research that we have been doing has been brought to the clinic in different ways. We discovered that we could turn on this dormancy program by combining two drugs that had been used in the past across different cancers, but never combined. One is azacitidine, which allows the cancer cells to remodel how they read the uh, information from their DNA. And when you do that, usually the cells stop growing because they remember that some of that information was misinterpreted, right? And the other drug that we used is vitamin A, which the chemical molecule is all transretinoic acid. And we found that, that that is a very powerful signal that when we were embryos helped us have the brain in the right place and have the right cells, the gut in the right place. It's a morphogen. It allows the embryo to pick lineages and what is going to make different parts of the body. So it's a very powerful instructor of, you know, uh, proper behavior of, of, of normal cells, right? So what we found is if we 
First treat with this is a cytidine drug that kind of makes the cells remember how to read the information. And then we give them this very powerful morphogen that instructs them to behave properly and not proliferate. We could turn on this program of dormancy in very aggressive cancer cells and just put them to sleep. And we have two studies where we showed this. One is published, the other is soon to be published, where we actually showed that if you combine these drugs briefly before surgery of the first lesion, and then in the adjuvant setting, after the removal of the primary tumor, you can completely suppress metastasis. So with this information, we went to medical oncologists and said, could we combine this in a cancer where we would actually capture patients that are in kind of this remission phase, but we know they're going to recur early, so we actually treat them and see if we can delay that recurrence. And we did that in prostate cancer. And the results are uh, going to be published hopefully uh, early next year. So now we identified two factors, tgf beta 2 and BMP7, that come from the host cells in the bone marrow microenvironment and tell the cancer cell to stop growing. So we asked, if a patient has abundance of these factors, do those cancer cells stop growing? And if they don't have it, what happens to them? So we use this in a clinical trial, in a pilot project with a group in Norway, which are very good collaborators because they have access to these bone marrow samples. We were able to profile the, bone, the, the fluids that we obtained from the bone marrow for the presence or absence of BMP7 and tgf beta 2 And the best example is BMP7 which was the most abundantly detected factor. We found that if a patient had any level of BMP7 in the bone marrow samples, those patients did not develop metastasis. However, if they had lost BMP7, then they recurred with bone metastasis. So this is another example how understanding how cancer cells interpret the niche where they land and the factors that are in that niche can inform about how a patient is going to behave in terms of relapse. The Cancer Dormancy and Tumor Microenvironment Institute was created in a joint vision with the Montefiore Einstein Cancer Centers. I think in the examples that I gave you, it's very clear that it's an almost inseparable relationship, the host signals and the cancer cells and how they interact. So over the years, we discovered that this biology was very complex, and in order to understand it, we had to actually collaborate with people that had different levels of expertise. With Paul Frenet, who was also a good friend, we asked questions about the bone marrow microenvironment. He was a specialist in understanding how the bone marrow instructed uh, normal hematopoietic stem cells to stay dormant, be recruited, and do all the things that they do normally, and also become cancer cells. There's a Neurosciences Institute. Many cancers go to the brain, and they grow in the brain eventually, sometimes after decades of uh, being silent. So immediately we saw an opportunity to kind of bring together this biology and the different resources and levels of expertise that existed at Einstein. We have people now in the institute that work on neuroblastoma. We have people that work on osteosarcoma, melanoma, breast cancer, and also a very strong group in hematological malignancies. Now all those groups are anchored under the institute, but other institutes also, like the aging, the stem cell institute. And the idea is to offer opportunities to explore this biology of dormancy across all these cancers. So these are opportunities that within a year now have emerged by creating the institute here at Einstein.